Happy Tuesday, it's Shannon Wilkie from the Shine Advocacy Group. Today, I'm going to talk about one of the common disabilities that we work with as education advocates and with our executive function coaching, and that is autism. Autism spectrum disorder, often called ASD, is a really broad spectrum, That's hence the name. A lot of times, people still refer to it as Asperger's, but that is no longer a diagnostic code or a diagnosis. Um, so it's autism, autism spectrum, spectrum disorder and if you do not have a diagnosis yet and you suspect that your student may have autism my expertise is not medical it's educational and there are four criteria that are generally there in the education setting that the school would also see to um, give the educational eligibility for autism and that would be um, social skills that's one of the hallmarks of autism is for the student to have delayed social skills some the like I said the spectrum is very large it can be nonverbal up to just difficulty with social skills so that's one another would be repetitive movements and behaviors so a lot of times the hand flapping is what we think of when we think of autism but it's much bigger than that it can be lining up cars, lining up things, always putting colors together, um, or like writing down numbers in a certain way. Um, just anything that's repetitive behavior that helps self-soothe and give some um, comfort to that student because they like to have things that are repetitive to help calm their systems. So a lot of kids have something that's visible and some are not as visible. Maybe the home sees it and the school doesn't or vice versa. Um, I, oftentimes, um, let me go back to the social skills. The eye contact is often brought up in our meetings. It's not always there. Students with ADHD can also have difficulty with eye contact, but autism usually has that as well. Um, that would fall under social skills. It does not have to be there, but it's, it's you know, facial expressions and eye contact are often, you know, um, still a growing skill when students have autism. Um, often the inflexibility and liking to have everything scripted out in a daily set schedule, um, the black and white is very common with autism. Um, we can see that as much as, you know, some students do need a written schedule with pictures even. And if anything is not going to happen by schedule, it's very helpful to cue that student to let them know. Um, or sometimes it's just inflexibility. If a schedule change happens, they don't understand as much as a student without autism would. It's still a growing skill. Um, the repetition of words or phrases often happens. Um, you know, just sometimes the resistance to holding hands, you know, at home, maybe you're seeing a resistance to hugging. That falls under sensory. So that's another hallmark of autism. Um, most kids would have some type of sensory um, difficulties. So their sensory might be aversions. They might be the kids who are putting their hands in their ears when there's a fire drill. They don't like loud noises. They're overstimulated, overstimulated. they're shut down. Some will even rock in situations like that or they'll just fixate, it's called perseverating on it. Oh, when's the fire drill gonna happen? When I go into the bathroom, when I flush the toilet, it's really gonna bother my sensory system. So I'm very worried about that and I can't you know, stop fixating on it. Or when the garbage truck comes, it's very noisy and that's uh, excitement to me, but also an aversion to me. So those are some aversions. Sensory seeking behavior, maybe um, the student who like, runs their whole body against the hall and every child in it when they're walking down the hall or they love to um, have their hands all over others, they're tying other shoes, combing others' hairs, things like that. So those are some common um, sensory things that school may see. You know, and in really a lot can be done when the growth and development when students have autism. Their help can happen at school and at home, outside services. And the, the gamut for this is it's called the spectrum because it's very big. Some students you may not know, it might not be apparent that they have autism, and some students may be nonverbal and doing some of the um, autism 
type behaviors that we are all familiar with. So what I always um, like to tell schools and families is no child is the same just because you see, well, autism looks like this at my occupational therapist or the other kids I work with, it looks like this. That's not it. That's why we need to default to the medical professionals. And in this case, it would either be a developmental pediatrician if the child is young, or um, I usually say a neuropsychologist would be a very good person to consult with for a really comprehensive autism evaluation. Schools can also look as well. Um, reach out if you have questions. If your student does have um, any of these type symptoms that may be the, the diagnosis of autism or autism spectrum and know that there is help at school and outside. All right, thank you, take care.